Item number SCP-7454, Security Level 3, Containment Class Euclid, Disruption Class Flam, Risk Class Warning. Special Containment Procedures SCP-7454 is contained within Site-19's Anomalous Humanoid Containment Wing in a standard humanoid containment chamber furnished with all essential amenities. The chamber is to be fitted with no less than two Scranton Reality Anchors which may be activated or deactivated dependent on SCP-7454's cooperation. SCP-7454's chamber is to be checked daily for any new additions, and said additions are to be removed depending disciplinary action and activation of SRAs. Update. SCP-7454 has agreed to create only new additions after a request is filed as part of its good behavior conditions. All requests are to be reviewed solely by Dr. East for approval or denial. SCP-7454 is currently cooperating with Foundation staff in exchange for psychological and gender-affirming treatment. As part of this agreement, SCP-7454 has agreed to not utilize its abilities outside of its chamber, and as such has been allowed limited free movement through the facility. Any infraction on this agreement may be met with revocation of applied benefits and activation of SRAs. Edited by Dr. East, as of the 7th of August, 20 beep, all staff interacting with SCP-7454 are to refer to them as ESOC, as part of the containment agreement. Under no circumstances are any staff to refer to SCP-7454 as Alvothidi or mention Alvothidi or SCP-7454's past to any degree. Any staff member doing so will face disciplinary action. Any Foundation member breaking this rule on a regular basis will face possible reassignment or potentially contract termination. This is not optional, people. These procedures are in place as a compulsory ongoing method of containment. If anyone refuses to comply, they will answer to me directly. I will not repeat myself. Dr. East Description SCP-7454 is an entity currently taking the form of a Caucasian male in the mid-twenties. SCP-7454 has displayed the ability to warp reality to a significantly high degree often using this ability to transform people and objects in its surroundings into fantastical alterations for its own amusement or when in an enraged state. SCP-7454 has shown full control over these abilities, whose full extent is currently unknown. SCP-7454 claims to be update, claims to have once been the Greek goddess of love, beauty, and sex, known as Elphethiti. Although SCP-7454 seems to reject this name and moniker, often reacting negatively when referred to as such, SCP-7454 suffers from a number of disorders such as depression, substance abuse, bipolar disorder, and gender dysphoria. It is currently presumed that the majority of these issues are a result of the established identity and worship of Alvothidi clashing directly with SCP-7454's preferred identity, appearance, and gender. Addendum 7454-A Discovery and Capture SCP-7454 was encountered during a routine surveillance operation in the township of Beep, Nebraska, USA on the 21st of July, 20 Beep. The town held a long-standing pagan belief system influenced by an encounter with an anomalous POI. A single agent was embedded in the township to report any anomalous occurrences, of which there have been none reported before the encounter with SCP-7454. Note, SCP-7454 apparently has no relation to the POI in question, and its arrival in Beep seems to be purely coincidental. Recovery Log, SCP-7454 21st of July, 20 Beep. Forward, Agent Samuels was embedded in the township of Beep to follow up on any occurrences brought about by any interaction with an anomalous POI. The township had recently begun celebrating Avothesia, with the entire community 
engaging in festivities involving feasting, revelry, and displays of love and affection. Agent Samuels participated in the festival for one hour before the first sighting of SCP-7454. Note, the following timeline of events was pieced together from footage from security cameras, phones, and Agent Samuels' body cam, as well as from first-hand accounts. Begin log. 11 hours, 32 minutes. The festival begins with crowds gathering to watch parades of fancifully dressed performers march through the street. Music is playing constantly along with petals and flowers being tossed across the parade. The crowd appears to be enjoying the festivities and feasting. 12 hours, 38 minutes, 21 seconds. SCP-7454 is first spotted walking down a side street towards the town centre. Its gait is uneven, indicating heavy intoxication. It appears disheveled and is drinking from a bottle in a brown paper bag. 12 hours, 42 minutes, 32 seconds. SCP-7454 enters the town square and pushes through a crowd of onlookers and into the middle of the square where a sculpture of Alvathiti covered in flowers and wreaths is being prayed to. 12 hours, 44 minutes, 12 seconds. SCP-7454 takes a large drink from the bottle, presumed to be alcoholic, before unsipping its pants and urinating on the statue's legs between two worshippers. 12 hours, 45 minutes, and 1 second. The crowd moves away from SCP-7454 as two large men walk up to and attempt to speak to SCP-7454 with the apparent intent to stop the disruption. 12 hours, 45 minutes, 53 seconds. SCP-7454 pushes the men away before climbing up onto the sculpture, hanging from its neck. SCP-7454 then proceeds to shout over the crowd, saying, Look at you all, praying to some chick like she gives a crap about your problems. But hey, I can hardly blame you. She's got some pretty nice tits. Before throwing the bottle at one of the men, hitting them in the groin area before they fall over. 12 hours, 47 minutes, 23 seconds. The music gets stopped, and the crowd is now centered around SCP-7454, along with Agent Samuels, as police and onlookers attempt to get SCP-7454 down from the sculpture. 12 hours, 52 minutes, 21 seconds. After failing to remove SCP-7454 from the sculpture, the crowd has begun to yell and throw objects at SCP-7454. SCP-7454 responds by shouting, Fine! You want a real party? Let's party! Before snapping its fingers and resulting in a flash of light. 12 hours, 53 minutes, 59 seconds. The statue suddenly begins to move and appears to now be made of flesh. It stands up as SCP-7454 jumps off onto the podium where it stood. The statue stood, looking over the crowd, which is now silent. 12 hours, 57 minutes, 23 seconds. The statue lets out a loud noise akin to a burp before vomiting a torrent of liquid, determined to be red wine, onto the onlookers. The crowd begins screaming and scattering. SCP-7454 throws a shoe at the speakers built into the podium, causing them to play Footloose by Kenny Loggins on loop. It is at this point that Agent Samuels calls in for backup. 13 hours, 4 minutes, 21 seconds. The crowd continues to run about in confusion as the present police force move in to apprehend SCP-7454. SCP-7454 points to a nearby petting zoo, causing dozens of chickens to transform into large chicken-human hybrids. These entities then run into the police officers, biting at their posteriors. Several shots were fired, none of which stopped the chicken creatures. 13 hours, 6 minutes, 43 seconds. SCP-7454 dances through the wine pouring from the statue entity and kicks a football into a nearby building. The building suddenly turns into a gelatinous pink material with several individuals caught inside. These individuals were later freed and were apparently able to breathe despite being fully encased. 
13 hours, 8 minutes, 42 seconds. Three other officers rush SCP-7454. One officer draws their service pistol and orders SCP-7454 to freeze. A large pile of snow manifests from an unknown source above the officers and falls on them, burying two of them and rendering them incapacitated. 13 hours, 8 minutes, 59 seconds. SCP-7454 pulls the remaining officer close and kisses them on the lips. When the officer pulls away, they spontaneously liquefy into a puddle of blue fluid. The puddle still retains the officer's face and center mass, which lets out a goggling scream when it is washed away by the torrent of wine. 13 hours, 10 minutes, 32 seconds. Agent Samuels runs into the square as people rush to the side street, running from the chicken entities. The statue entity attempts to stand, but slips on the wine flooding the street and falls back into the food banquet. 13 hours, 10 minutes, 21 seconds. SCP-7454 takes notice of people fleeing and points to a street filled with civilians. SCP-7454 makes a gun-firing motion as all the civilians' clothes were blown off. The clothes then animate and begin running after people still wearing clothes and attempting to remove them. 13 hours, 13 minutes, 12 seconds. Agent Samuels aims the gun at SCP-7454 and attempts to fire, but instead redacted begins to spray from the bullet. Agent Samuels tosses the gun away as SCP-7454 can be heard saying, Oh, it's okay, love. Happens to the best of us. And taking another drink out of a new bottle of alcohol. It is unknown where SCP-7454 obtained this bottle. 13 hours, 14 minutes, 1 second. Agent Samuels attempts to rush SCP-7454, but trips over a chicken entity. SCP-7454 laughs and yells an obscene joke about falling for redacted and turns his attention to the cake on the smashed banquet table. 13 hours, 17 minutes, 21 seconds. SCP-7454 parts the cake with its finger, causing it to grow into a two-meter-tall humanoid entity made of cake. The entity then moves over to Agent Samuels and says, This should be a piece of cake, before lunging at Agent Samuels, who engages it in hand-to-hand -hand combat. 13 hours, 18 minutes, 1 second. The large statue entity can be heard snoring and is presumed to be unconscious. People can be seen chasing their clothes through the streets as an animate wooden horse of unknown origin chases after another police officer while making robotic kneeing noises. SCP-7454 moves to a back alley behind a banquet table and out of sight. 13 hours, 20 minutes, 21 seconds. Agent Samuels gains the upper hand against the cake entity and manages to remove both its legs and arms, rendering it immobile. The cake entity is heard saying, all right, we'll call it a draw. Before Agent Samuels moves to look for SCP-7454, a detachment of agents arrives at the scene at this point and moves to help contain the situation. Around 50 gelatinous entities emerge from the transport building and charge the agents. The agents respond by opening fire. 13 hours, 23 minutes, 2 seconds. Agent Samuels moved to the alley where SCP-7454 was seen leaving, tripping over a swarm of chicken entities, kicking several to the side. The entities can be heard screaming as they were kicked. 13 hours, 25 minutes, 21 seconds. The agents have managed to dispatch the gelatinous individuals with relative ease and rush through the crowd of nude individuals and chicken hybrids to where Agent Samuels is standing. Together, they enter the alleyways. 13 hours, 25 minutes, 12 seconds. The agents discover SCP-7454 unconscious in the alleyway. SCP-7454 has a bottle in its hand and its pants around its ankles. It is thought SCP-7454 passed out while urinating. 13 hours, 44 minutes, 54 seconds. SCP-7454 is detained. Agents return to round up civilians and terminate or capture any anomalous entities remaining. Clean up crews are dispatched and civilians are amnesticized. 
13 hours, 46 seconds, okay, 13 hours, 46 minutes, 52 seconds. SCP-7454 is moved to the closest SCP facility in Beep. End log. SCP-7454 was placed in a temporary containment chamber fitted with a portable scrambling reality anchor before it could be moved to a more permanent location. Addendum 7454-B Interview Logs SCP-7454 awoke approximately 18 hours later in a state of confusion. After being informed that it was detained for the incident, SCP-7454 proceeded to abuse Foundation staff. While it is presumed that SCP-7454 attempted to use its powers to cause another incident, it would seem that the effects of the SRA implemented in its chamber, in addition to SCP-7454's extremely hungover state, prevented any effects from manifesting. During standard intake procedure, SCP-7454 claimed that he did nothing wrong due to the festival being a festival in their name. When questioned further on this, SCP-7454 did not elaborate. However, it was inferred from this interaction that SCP-7454 was claiming to be the Greek goddess Avrothidi. In light of this, Dr. Eth, a researcher under the Department of Mythology and Folkloristics, was tasked with interviewing SCP-7454 in an attempt to learn more. Interview SCP-7454-1 Date 22nd of July, 20 Beep Interviewer Dr. East Subject SCP-7454 Notes SCP-7454 was relatively cooperative with Foundation staff following the intake procedure. The extent of SCP-7454's ability is still unknown at this time, so several precautions have been taken to ensure that any reality-bending effects would remain minimal. Begin Log This is Dr. East, Department of Mythology and Folkloristics conducting an interview of anonymous humanoid SCP-7454. SCP-7454 was discovered during routine surveillance of the township of Beep. How are you feeling, SCP-7454? Oh, I'm sorry, are uh, you talking to me? Uh, I thought you were just talking to the table or something, since you're just rattling off numbers like I'm a freaking piece of furniture. Uh, s apologies, it's part of the job. Would you prefer if I call you Elvathi? At this point, the containment chamber begins to shake as SCP-7454 glares at Dr. East. It is possible that the portable SRA may only partially dampen SCP-7454's reality bending abilities, which are amplified when SCP-7454 is in an emotional state. Noted. Perhaps for now we would prefer to you with the moniker of subject. The shaking ceases as SCP-7454 looks away. Fine. Very well. Now tell me, subject, why were you in the township of Beep yesterday? To partake in the local baked goods. Baked goods? Yeah, they make these killer donuts there, filled to the brim with jam and cream. Just the best. Right, and a giant naked woman and chicken people. Oh, that, just trying to have some fun at the party. It was so boring with all the flowers and scented candles. Thought they would enjoy some good old-fashioned chaos. And you definitely weren't attempting to ruin the festival at all. Right. SCP-7454 leans forward over the desk. Listen, Fruit Nut, the festival was technically my festival. If they didn't want the literal body that they worship so friggin' hard to show up, why on earth would they even bother setting the damn thing up? They have all those friggin' marble statues and pretty dresses wishing for love and beauty, but when a literal god of love shows up and whips the redacted out, it's suddenly heretical? How friggin' ignorant can you be? I see a subject. Please, try to calm down. We are just trying to understand who and what you are. We don't want any more incidents to occur. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's not like you already told me who I was at the start of this freaking interview, huh? Right, so you claim to be the 
Greek goddess of love, Avrothede, correct? Call me that again. See what happens. But that's what you claimed, didn't you? You claimed you were the one they set up the festival for. That would be Avrothede, am I right? Stop it. Why? Do you really hate the name Avrothede that much? SCP-7044 lunges across the desk towards Dr. East, who manages to back away as armed guards enter the room to subdue SCP-7454. Dozens of large beetles, later identified as, I guess, Zuxitus, or Cretan soldier beetles, crawl out from inside Dr. East's coat, which they promptly remove. These beetles were later captured and determined to be non-anomalous, albeit abnormally large. They are believed to originate from SCP-7454. Enlog. In light of the previous incidents, SCP-7454 was moved to a more permanent containment chamber fitted with two stationary stranded reality anchors to prevent the effects of SCP-7454's abilities. After three days in containment with no further incidents, SCP-7454 was asked to conduct another interview with Dr. Eath. SCP-7454 had seemingly calmed down after the outburst and agreed. Interview SCP-7454-2 Date, 26th of July, 20 beep. Interviewer, Dr. Eath. Subject, SCP-7454 Notes, despite the previous incident and the dangerous present, it would appear that SCP-7454 was unable to overpower the combined effects of two concurrent SRAs. In light of this, Dr. Eath was allowed to continue interviews with armed supervision. This is Dr. Eaths conducting a follow-up interview with SCP-7454. SCP-7454 has agreed to be referred to as subject and will be referred to as such for the rest of this interview. So subject, feel better after your little tantrum. Watch it, or I'll make them send Pete next time. Oh, it was my understanding that you were struggling to overcome our countermeasures. Is that not true? Whatever the fuck you've done to me, it can't last forever. It's giving me a splitting headache, and I feel like crap. But I swear, I'll turn your skin inside out as soon as it wears off. We'll have to see then, won't we? Both SCP-7454 and Dr. East are silent for two minutes. Alright, look, maybe we got off on the wrong foot. I am simply here to gain a clear understanding of the situation. But if you continue to react negatively to me asking questions about your past, then these interviews are going to take forever. SCP-7454 lets out a deep sigh and hangs his head. Fine. Ask your questions. Right. So firstly, are you the Greek goddess of Rathidi? SCP-7454 visibly recoils. What do you think? Okay, uh, why were you at the festival in Beep? I was there because I wanted to mess with those idiots for worshipping something so stupid. They were there to worship you though, weren't they? They were there to worship a 2,000 year old image of a pretty lady with her freaking tits out, hoping she would help them bang your cousins or whatever it is rural towns in this country do. So you don't agree with this portrayal? I tried to move on hundreds of years ago, tried to escape the idea that I was supposed to be this marble statue of perfection that my family had perpetuated throughout the centuries. Family? Do you mean the other gods? They were all so freaking hung up on the fact that if I tried to be different to the image they had built up, it would ruin the perfect of the world. They kept saying to me, why would you want to be this lonely man when you're the most beautiful woman on earth? Even my own son told me I would be proud and grateful to be who I was, and I was the goddess of motherhood. This poor little crap has mummy issues. You know I wasn't even allowed to wear clothes back then, because my body was so beautiful my family and worshippers expected me to be nude all the time, just so they could bask in the presence of the perfect woman. So you decide to leave and change yourself to fit a new image, closer to 
who you wanted to be, and yet the world still saw you as this goddess of feminine beauty. Your followers refused to accept the fact that the body they worship was transgender, and instead chose to ignore your preferred gender identity in favor of the image. Transgender? Gender identity? What the frick are you talking about? You mean you don't? I expected you of all people would know what transgender means. Well, in any case, have you tried to change your family's point of view? Tried? Dude, I pretty much ate war on the idea for decades. I burned temples, started new cults, and even got rid of that stupid library just to try and start fresh. Library? Wait. I spent so long trying to force change on those droves of believers that my own family had to intervene to try and stop an upheaval of their entire established religion, smiting anyone who actually cared. My son even doubled down on the idea, creating more and more new faiths across the world that all worship this beautiful and all motherly figure of love or whatever be because the boy has such deep-seated issues, he'd rather make a thousand more imitations of his mother dearest before freaking listening to me. Your son, Venus, Heather, Mary, Freya, he made or adopted so many that no matter what I tried, there were still ways of people out there worshipping at least some image of me so that it would be impossible to to change even the slightest amount of the status quo. There would always be a sex goddess, always a mother deity, always a symbol of beauty, and it was always connected to me! I, Mary. SCP-7454 slams its fist on the desk before continuing. Do you know how hard it is to have millions of people worship you so intensely that they end up ignoring you? Or worse, treat the person they worship as heretical, burning down everything they don't like, that they don't believe, that they can't believe. No one listens. No one cares. No one ever vegan. Just. SCP-7454 begins to cry before grabbing at its hair and laying its head on a desk. Both Dr. East and SCP-7454 are silent for three minutes. I think we should end this here for today. Don't you agree, subjects? SCP-7454 does not respond. All right, this is Dr. East concluding the second interview with SCP-7454. And no. Due to the continued hostility of SCP-7454, its containment chamber was kept under the constant effects of the SRAs. Due to latent issues inherent to utilizing this technology for extended periods, it is suggested that a more permanent solution be pursued as soon as possible. Continued interviews are to be conducted with the essential goal of simpler containment methods. Interview SCP-7454-3 Date, 28th of July, 20 Beep Interviewer, Dr. East Subject, SCP-7454 Note, SCP-7454 had not shown any ability to overcome the implemented containment procedures, even when in rage. As such, Dr. East was allowed to continue with the interviewing process with less supervision, or though an armed presence was still recommended. Begin log. This is Dr. Eves, performing a third interview with SCP-7454. How are we feeling today, SCP? Uh, sorry. Subject. Terrible. Care to elaborate? Freaking terrible. Uh, uh, uh-huh. And why is that? My head has been killing me for days. I stand up and I'm so dizzy, I just fall over. I can't move, I can't think, I can't do anything. Whatever you did to me, it's just getting worse. I see, so the effects of the SRAs seem to be taking a toll on you physically. SRAs? Uh, never mind, let's see if we can come to some kind of agreement that benefits us both, yes? 
If you cooperate with me today and in future, then perhaps we can update your protocols so the effect is lessened or maybe even removed. Fine. Alright, so, we've established who you are and where you came from. But, I want to hear more about your family. What about them? If I'm correct, your family is just as powerful as you, if not more so. This makes them highly dangerous anomalies that we cannot allow to run amok. Do you know where they might be located currently? No clue. Okay, uh, do you know what they're capable of? Pretty much anything. Sure, and how many of them are there? Too many to count. You said you could cooperate, subject. I can't do anything for you if you don't give me something. What do you want from me? I haven't seen them in hundreds of years. They could be anywhere doing anything and have probably sired hundreds or thousands more children. It's not like we're on close terms anymore. I don't keep track of them. SCP-7454 places his head in his hands and groans. Listen, can you just stop doing whatever it is you're doing to me? I can't do that. Your abilities are dangerous, and if we were to deactivate the SRAs, you could potentially escape and cause more problems. If you cooperate, we might be able to help, but like I said, we need more. I don't have anything to give you. At least, it, it just hurts so freaking much. I'm sorry, subject, but we can't. SCP-7454 collapses out of his chair and onto the floor. Blood is pouring from its nose and appears unresponsive. Subject! Subject! Can you hear me? Everthidi! Crap! Get medical in here! Now! End log. After SCP-7454 collapsed, medical teams were rushed to the containment chamber in order to administer emergency medical care. Dr. Eath's instructed staff to immediately deactivate the SRAs containing SCP-7454 against procedure. After the SRAs deactivated, SCP-7454 remained in a comatose state for roughly one week before awakening. Upon awakening, Dr. East was immediately contacted to perform an interview. Interview SCP-7454-4 Date the 4th of August, 20 beep. Interviewer, Dr. Eaths. Subject, SCP-7454. Note, SCP-7454 had been receiving medical care within its containment cell when it awoke. Dr. Eaths was contacted and immediately moved to conduct an interview with SCP-7454 under heavy supervision of armed guards. Begin log. Hello, subject. Are you feeling any better? A bit... What's with the army? They're here in case you decide to do anything rash. We had deactivated the SRAs temporarily to help you recover. But if you attempt to use your abilities in any way, they will be reactivated. Understand? Yeah, I get it. Cooperate or suffer. You sound like my family. Subject, listen. We might be the big scary government organization here, but we're not out to make your life a living hell. Our goal is to simply secure, contain, and protect the anomalous in order to preserve the world from chaos. Right now, you are cooperating with us, so we don't need to activate the SRAs. If you continue to do this, then we can keep them offline. And what do I have to do to stop you from nearly killing me? Cooperate. It's that simple. Don't use your abilities without authorization, and stay within the confines of the facility. Is that it? That's it. Fine, just please, keep those seizure machines off. Very well, I will update your containment procedures to reflect this new agreement. Remember, this is contingent on you not utilizing your abilities. I get it. Excellent. Once you've recovered, we'll schedule more interviews. Dr. Eve stands and moves to leave. East. Dr. Eath stops and turns to SCP-7454. Yes? You said a while back that I was transgender. What does that mean? 
Oh, well, it means you identify as a different gender to the one you were assigned at birth. It's a fairly common occurrence among the population. Nowadays, the world has a lot deeper understanding of transgenderism and gender identity. Gender identity? Yes, it's the gender you feel you are as a person, rather than the one you physically appear as or are treated as, although those aren't mutually exclusive, of course. Is there anything else, subject? No, I think. I just want to rest. Very well, I'll conclude this interview. End log. After the previous interview concluded, SCP-7454 remained cooperative with Foundation personnel, even without utilizing SRAs to inhibit its abilities. Following the discussion with Dr. Eaths, SCP-7454 asked for materials pertaining to transgenderism and gender identity, and in light of its good behavior, this was similarly granted. After three days in recovery, SCP-7454 requested another interview with Dr. East, which was granted. Interview, SCP-7454-5 Date, 7th of August, 20 Beep Interviewer, Dr. East Subject, SCP-7454 Notes, SCP-7454 has requested this interview and has been cooperating with Foundation staff more readily after the last interview. It is recommended that mutual cooperation should be made a go in light of the SRA's effects on SCP-7454 and the inherent complications of long-term usage. This is Dr. East participating in a requested interview by SCP-7454. SCP-7454 will be referred to as subject for the entirety of this interview. Hi, subject. How are we feeling today? I'm not sure. You're not sure? Why is that? I just spent the last few days on the books and videos I was given, and to be honest, I don't know how am I supposed to feel or who I'm supposed to be anymore. Did the materials provide it help in any way? They did, but... Listen, Eaths. You can call me Raleigh. Right, Raleigh. You told me I might be a transgender and that it was pretty common among people, right? Well, in those videos, there were just tons of people, ordinary people that have been going through all this and it's the exact same thing I've been dealing with for hundreds of years now, and I... I think maybe you were right. Oh, that's really good to hear, Subject. I'm happy for you. Yeah, but it still doesn't change the fact that those imbeciles out there still worship the idea of this ideal and perfect woman, while no one would listen to what I fucking say. Well, in your case, I imagine it's even more likely to cause distress considering the literal state of worship. But can I suggest something? May as well. Why don't you instead leave it behind, abandon the idea and identity of her completely, and make a new one for yourself? A new identity? Just like start over? After it's been so long, it'd be so hard. I mean, you've been asking so much about my past and family. How am I supposed to move on when part of the deal is that I keep revisiting it all? Like, where am I even supposed to begin? How about a name? A name? Yes, think about a name that fits you better than your dead name, and introduce yourself as that. Hardly anyone actually knows you as a person other than your family. So, if you begin to build a life as yourself, instead of trying to change the world's views, then perhaps you can live a life you want to, instead of being trapped by this old and outdated image. Listen, as I've said before, they might be the government agency type, but we're not so cold and foolish as to make our jobs harder and cause you undue suffering over something so trivial as a name. If you continue to cooperate with us like you have been, we may be able to provide the support you need to begin transitioning. Subject? 
SCP-7454 lays its head on its arms and begins to cry. Dr. East breaks protocol and moves to the other side of the desk to speak with SCP-7454. They are later reprimanded for this action. Look, we here at the Foundation have access to a wide variety of specialists in every field. Say the word, and provided you continue to cooperate with us in our goals, I can provide you with regular meetings with a gender specialist who can help you transition properly. SCP-7454 continues to cry and lifts its head up to look at Dr. Eves. Would you like me to make the call? SCP-7454 wipes the tears from its face and nods in agreement. All right. Dr. Eves smiles at SCP-7454 and moves back to the other side of the desk. I will arrange for you to see a regular specialist and update your procedures so that no mention of Alpha Thede will be made in reference to you or around you. The SRAs will remain disabled and you will be given limited freedom around the facility as long as you do not manifest your abilities. Understood? SCP-7454 nods in agreement. Perfect. I am glad you called for this interview today, Subject. Hopefully, we can continue working together going forward. Isak. Pardon? My name. It's Isak. Dr. Eves smiles again before moving to leave. It was nice speaking with you, Isak. I will see you when we organize a time for another interview. Thank you, Riley. And now, following the interviews, SCP-7454 was scheduled for regular meetings with both Dr. Eves and Dr. Hannigan, an experienced gender specialist Hired by the Foundation, no further major incidents involving SCP-7454's BRT bending abilities have been recorded, and Dr. Hannigan reports SCP-7454 has made steady progress in its treatment.